Good morning, and welcome to our Business Works program. I'm Jackie Atchison, Executive Director for the Arts Council for Monterey County. Business Works is one of our programs that helps provide solutions for busy creatives with quarterly informational workshops. Today's workshop will focus on grant writing essentials from both the grant writer and the evaluator's perspective. And as a reminder, if you have any questions, please enter them in the chat box or on the comments on Facebook. And we'll try to get to as many questions as time permits. We're fortunate to be joined by two accomplished women who have been involved with the Arts Council for many years. Arlene Krebs has worked on projects in the arts, education, and technology sector for over 35 years. She has also served on various nonprofit boards in our community, including nine years with the Arts Council and two of those as board presidents. Pat Skinner worked for 25 years as a special educator and administrator at the Monterey County Office of Education. She is also a writer and freelance for seven years writing for the special sections of the Monterey Herald. Pat has evaluated Arts Council grant applications for over 15 years. Our first presenter is Arlene Krebs, who will provide some useful advice on applying for arts grants with the Arts Council. Please. Good morning, everyone, and thank the Arts Council for this opportunity to help you write the best possible grant application. I'm going to talk about grant writing in general. First off, the arts offer a wonderful way for one to apply for grant applications across a broad spectrum of funding agencies. And why? Because the arts cut across all sectors of our lives. You could look for arts and education. You could look under arts and healing, which would be under health. You can look for arts under arts and culture. You can look for arts funding under at-risk uh, children or seniors or veterans. So the arts and culture offer a wonderful array of expressing the programs, projects, history, and opportunities that your organization can undertake successfully because you serve your constituents with valuable programs, with follow through, with good evaluation, and mostly with a good record of project management, which is something that every funding agency wants to see. Grant writing is for me a very creative process. To write is to express yourself as an artist does with paints or a sculpture does with form, or a dancer does with structure. So I just mentioned three very important components of good grant writing. Clear and concise expression, the way you form your ideas and seg one into the other, and the way that you express your organization in the most positive, and beneficial light to the reviewer. Another key point. When you are writing, you want to capture the imagination of the reader. So my first mantra that I always give is that you write for the heart. You do good storytelling. You write for the heart in order to reach the pocket. You never begin a grant application with a boring first sentence. You begin a grant application with an imaginative beginning to a story that you want to tell about your organization. You write with the reviewer in mind so that you do not leave the reviewer with any questions. For example, so often we see in applications we have involved 30% of our community in this arts mural. 30% of how many? 100 people? 3,000 people? 10,000 people? Clarify. Don't leave the reader with a question. 
you could say over um, the long life of our organization. Well, how many years of your organization? Five, three, 10, 15, provide answers. And also write with active verbs. Do not write. This is the way we have seen it. Now, we have seen this is the way you express yourself with active verbs and with concise language. And make sure you don't repeat the same idea in a different sentence because that gets boring and it doesn't provide for the movement of ideas. So for example, uh, good grant writing for both public, which means public funding from state and local uh, government agencies, as well as federal government agencies or private grant applications. And those are from corporations or foundations um, or various service programs like rotary clubs, et cetera. Private funding um, is often used with a very simple application. When most of them use the common grant application, which takes you through a series of questions and the Arts Council's grant application is modeled on the common grants. So to begin your grant writing process, unless you're a really experienced writer, you should form a team. One member of the team would take care of all of the background boilerplate information, your contact information, your mission statement, all of the required uploads, brochures, photographs, financials, last year's annual report, this year's annual budget, um, your 501c3 IRS determination letter, your project budget should be allocated to a specific individual who will work on the project budget with you if you are the major writer and do the narrative. In other words, it's a team approach. And you should also give a draft of your application to someone who knows nothing and have him or her read it so that he or she can answer uh, question, you ask you questions to help you round out the application. Now let's look at the specifics of the Arts Council's grant application. The first part is mission and history and it asks you for 1500 characters. And by the way, you always work offline and you always come in at least five characters less than what's required. So it says 1500, I come in at 1492, 1495 max, because I have found in years of grant writing and doing online work, the characters never uh, match. What you have on your Word file is not the same as what's counted on the portal. And it's always characters with spaces. So you have mission and history. Do not begin with the mission of our organization is boring. I've been advising you to write for the heart to capture the imagination. So you could start with something like, over the past 15 years, our organization has been involved in dozens of activities with the community, including workshops in schools, um, working with seniors in the visual arts, conducting after school dance workshops, and finally painting a mural on the town's library. These activities reflect the long held and strongly believed in mission of our organization, which states, okay, you get the idea. In that mission and history section, you are highlighting the accomplishments of your organization and the commitments of it to the community and constituents you serve. Question number two, project description and goals. This is where you actually fine tune what it is you are proposing to get funding for. So for example, you want to make sure that you begin with a statement about what the problem is that your program is addressing. It could be anything from the lack of arts in the schools or helping veterans heal from PTSD or working with seniors. Whatever it is, you're overcoming isolation, you're creating collaboration, teamwork, special events, 
et cetera. And you list your goals with active verbs. The goals of this project are colon, to motivate veterans to become involved in the arts so that they express the pain and the fear and overcoming the trauma of their experience. I'm just making this up now. I have no script. Goal number two, to involve the community and artists in working with the veterans. Goal number three, uh, to produce the artwork and hold a community event. Okay, you saw that I began each one of those goals with active verbs, to do something. You can also underneath each one of those goals list a few objectives, which really demonstrates your understanding of the breadth and scope and outcomes of your project. Question number three, program and project leader and teachers. This is a very important question. So you would say, for example, Sally Brown with over 15 years experience of teaching visual arts in various schools in the Monterey County region will serve as project manager on this program responsible for. So I very quickly identified some skills that this person has, and then I'm segueing into be specific, show that the experience will demonstrate what this project leader will accomplish, what her role and responsibilities are for this project. Finally, community impact. Here is where you're going to talk about what you're offering to the community, how it will impact the community and the outcomes you expect for the community. Again, each one of these answers is 1500 characters. That's a good couple of paragraphs that have meaning, that are rich, that don't repeat, that write for the reviewer, not for yourself, and that express in the most positive ways what your project is about, the community needs your meeting, how you will be successful, and one other component, which is not really part of this a grant application, how you will evaluate the results through surveys, focus groups, attendance, et cetera. Evaluation is an important aspect of many grant applications. Finally, the Arts Council asks you to list your board of directors, your board approval letter, your program budget, and your, pro your pr budget narrative. Um, as I mentioned, you should have somebody working on this. The board of directors should list the board, their role, their city, and some applications require their um, professional uh, experience or their job and work experience. The approval letter from your board president or a member of your board shouldn't be, oh, we approve this project. It should be more about the organization. Our organization has diligently worked in our community for X number of years, and we are delighted to present this new project, this new program to the Arts Council in which we have strong community and board support. And then the board member who's writing the letter should give some highlights of the project that you may have said in the application or that, that dem, uh, deserve repeating or enlargement, enhancement, enriching, and something else about your organization that you weren't able to express. And then of course, if the um, organization has any, con any further questions to please contact the board president or letter. Finally, one more word on the program budget, be realistic. Don't put costs sky high, be very realistic about what your costs are and express it. For example, if you have a project manager and you're paying 10% of the salary, you write in the budget manager uh, positions, we are including 10% of the salary, which we are matching with 5%. And uh, this is what that project manager will do. All right, so we're about, at the end of my time right now, and I'd love to take uh, some questions and uh, hear what your concerns are. And I hope this was thank helpful. Yes, thank you so much, Arlene. I do have a few questions for you. Um, one question is, should I apply for the maximum amount of the funding available? Um, you apply for the amount that's appropriate for your organization. 
Unfortunately, with the Arts Council, it has fallen into this $5,000 max and everyone now applies for $5,000. It's across the board. And the way you receive the amount of your request with the Arts Council is determined by the points and re you receive by, from your reviewer. So in the Arts Council scenario, I often recommend, yeah, apply for the max. But in other grant applications, you present a budget that really represents, and of course you create a budget for the Arts Council that demonstrates the 5,000 that you're requesting. Okay, thank you. And do most funders provide feedback when they deny a grant? It depends on the funding agency. Large federal government agencies will also often send you the reviewer's comments and the score points that you received. Um, many foundations do not, but you can always contact the program officer and say, can you give me any feedback? Uh, we'd like to reply, uh, apply again. Uh, it was a criticism of the Arts Council that I raised that it was not apply, uh, reply, applying, replying to these requests and helping. We always helped individually by saying you can come and speak to the executive director or a program director or the arts education director and get some feedback. And now I've learned this time around, the Arts Council will give you access to your evaluator's comments. And the Arts Council does a great job in evaluation because it's about each of your proposals is evaluated by five people representing the five districts in our county. I was wondering if Pat had anything to say about you know, presentation. Um, yeah, no, it was great. I, I loved your idea of a team approach because I think, um, yeah, when you can kind of pool your resources, um, we get a bigger picture. And I think that is, is good. And excuse me, I was, I was, my mic was muted there. Um, I come across in reviewing um, many uh, applications that uh, don't ask for the full amount. And I always feel like, um, you know, maybe those organizations are just a little more thoughtful and, you know, this is what I need. And, you know, I'm not just asking for the 5,000, but, you know, this is what we need. And, and then that's also demonstrated in their financials. Um, and yeah, we are giving feedback. Uh, in fact, when I talk a little bit, I'll, I'll talk about that, but uh, we, we rate uh, three things in our rubric. Um, During your presentation. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but, but um, yeah. And if anyway, I'll, I will talk about that in a minute. Okay. Do you have more questions for me? I have one more question that just came in. Any ideas on how to narrow down the project topic? The project topic? I'm not sure I understand that question. Wow. I'm not sure what the person means by the project topic. Are you talking, if the person is talking about the scope of the project? Most likely, you know, um, maybe they well, have lots of projects. If you have, yes. if you have a large project that goes beyond, for example, the $5,000 funding, from the Arts Council, what you want to do is apply to one of our other local foundations. Unfortunately, Yellow Brick Road and Monterey Peninsula Volunteer Services are out of the loop now because their stores are not open and they can't generate funds. But you would go for additional funding. And what you can do, which all funding agencies like to see, is other kinds of funding support. So when you go to a second funder, you can say, I have applied to the Arts Council for $5,000 for this, and we're seeking funding to support that. Or if you already have some money, it's always good to put in some of your budget. Um, for example, in the project manager uh, I, I mentioned, you can say that the organization is uh, contributing $500 or $1,000 towards the $4,000 salary. And that shows that you're organization is dem very committed to the project and that you're not relying on one or just one funding agency. So I hope that I've answered that question. I want to add one more point. Collab and this is for collaborative projects, particularly um, beyond the Arts Council's funding. Collaborative projects offer you a whole new arena 
wonderful array of going after funding. And we maybe we'll get to that uh, towards the end of our program with other questions, because it's Pat's turn now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Arlene. And we will have another opportunity for more questions after our next presenter. So the Arts Council has been providing grants to the arts organizations and cultural groups in our county since 1985. And these grant applications are evaluated by a team of volunteers who have arts experience or knowledge. And as Arlene mentioned, they represent all five supervisorial districts in our county. One of those evaluators is Pat Skinner, who will now provide her experience in evaluating the grants. Welcome, Pat. Thank you. Um, and uh, Arlene touched on some of this, but when we go to rate um, the areas that we look at, the elements that we look at are uh, the quality of your program. And I wanted to say too, we used to uh, get together the team of uh, reviewers and we'd have coffee and pastries and we'd have notebooks of, uh, you know, all of the documents that people submitted in as part of their um, grant proposal. And we discuss, uh, you know, our ratings and um, it, you know, it was interesting because you could influence people in a good way. And then sometimes, you know, you might uh, take part of your score, lower it uh, because of something someone else said. Well, um, you know, not just in the COVID era, but years ago, uh, that was all changed. And now uh, all of the information from the grant proposals, it's uploaded. We do not get together. We are doing it uh, on our own. And so it's just become much more streamlined and I missed getting together, but really it, it's much more objective this way. And so uh, the five areas, uh, Arlene touched on this, but uh, we do look at the quality of your program. I really liked um, Arlene mentioning uh, doing your grant proposal as a team or having, you know, having people that can um, add and help edit uh, things that you're gonna be presenting to us. Um, so we look at the quality of your program. And again, it is storytelling as Arlene was saying. I look for, um, you know, the ability to communicate uh, the quality of your program, you know, express your, your passion for the project. Um, and you really try to connect to that. You know, it's not about impressing us as much as really connecting to why you're doing this um, and what, what impact it's gonna have, which is something we look at in a minute here. Um, and again, Arlene mentioned uh, the quality of the leader the teachers, the artists, and uh, again, you know, people will uh, talk about, write about, uh, you know, where people went to school or, um, you know, things that they've done, which is really important. And also try to, again, express their passion uh, for the arts, for what they do, and, and for this project, if you can, or this program that you're gonna be doing. Um, Third and quite important is uh, the impact that your project or program is gonna have. Um, and sometimes people sell themselves short. Eventually, you know, uh, we can help with that a little bit if we can see that you're gonna be making more of an impact than maybe you gave your um, self credit for in the proposal. But um, yeah, we look at five, you know, five areas that you're rated on um, in Monterey County, East Salinas, Salinas, North and South County, um, the peninsula, excuse me, six and Big Sur. So, you know, it, and again, in the olden days, uh, there was a lot of advertising that had to be done maybe, but if you're just in, on the peninsula, you're not necessarily gonna draw people from all around the county or, or that might be true in Big Sur or South County. But in the age of Zoom and these different platforms, um, you can impact people all around the county. So, um, you know, think about that during this time. Um, 
And then we, of course, look at your budget and financials. I would just say one uh, thing that makes a strong organization uh, look strong is when you have your board um, contributing, when I'm not talking about an amount now, but um, that your board members contribute to your organization. Um, that's always been a sign of you know, a strong organization. Um, supporting materials, uh, those are you know, important to, uh, to send us just so we can get an idea of things you've done in the past. It always helps me if somebody can connect what they're sending. Sometimes you know, people send a review um, of something they've done in the past or performance. And that's um, understandable, but sometimes people send materials and I'm not quite sure why they're sending what they have sent. So um, help us with that a little bit. Anytime you can make a connection, like Arlene was saying, you know, tell a bit more of the story. It's really, really helpful. And then I wanted to just talk about our rubric, which is, again, is really streamlined when we used to meet in a group, um, we might have five or six or, eight items, uh, you know, one to eight, eight being the highest, uh, one being the lowest in terms of rating someone. Now our rubric just has uh, three ratings. Uh, number one is you were, you know, we didn't feel that your uh, program had, had the quality that uh, we wanted to see. Um, and number two, you have good quality, you know, you've re fulfilled the requirement uh, needed for that item or element. And then three, you're at an exceptional level. So um, that's how things are rated. And there's no, uh, you know, there's no two plus or three minus, minus three or whatever. Um, it's, you know, it's pretty cut and dried in that regard. But, you know, again, as Arlene was saying, we do provide feedback now. And when we uh, rate an element less than three, we have uh, space to provide feedback. I have to say, I haven't always done that, but I really um, am making a commitment to, to do that now because you want to get the feedback if, you know, if you're not uh, given the grant, you want to try again. I just really encourage you to do that. I know some people um, get discouraged and they don't wanna apply again. Find out where you fell down or, or what you need to add, or you know, like Arlene was saying, the language that uh, you use, using the active voice, telling the story, showing your passion, your interest, your excitement, um, those things go a long way. Um, it, you know, it's, it's hard to read something when people are just kind of, you know, it feels like they're phoning it in almost. You want to, you want to feel that, that interest, why they're doing this. That's really, really important. So, um, and then, oh, they wanted me to address why I read the grants and, you know, just, for a, a moment, I guess I would say, um, you know, I get a peek at all these great uh, ideas for programs, for projects all around the county. Um, it's a privilege for me and um, I really enjoy it. Uh, and I enjoy giving the feedback too. So um, thanks to the Arts Council and um, yeah, I, I hope I continue to do it. Thank you, Pat. Arlene, do you have any feedback on Pat's presentation? You have me muted, okay. Yes, Pat, that was great. Um, I think that your point about everybody being very positive in their presentation is important. An applicant should be able to express the idea of the project in two or three sentences. Everything else is an enlargement and enhancement demonstrating project management, et cetera. If they can't convince you in that part that you emphasize the program project, what's it about, then it's not going to be a strong proposal. Um, 
I also thought that giving people encouragement when they don't get the amount that they need or they get rejected. When we rejected proposals from the Arts Council previously, it was because the amount of money would become so little based on your point scores that you couldn't do the project. And what we wanted you to do was reapply, write a stronger proposal so that you could get a higher score from the reviewers. So that's good advice. Don't get discouraged. I um, have what I call another mantra, re reuse, recycle, reapply. You take what you've done and you build upon it and you enhance it and you make it better. Uh, so, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Pat. We appreciate that. And we do have time for a few more questions. Um, I received one here that says, because our group sometimes explores more provocative material and what I believe is tasteful in tasteful and meaningful ways, I sometimes wonder if this affects our chances of receiving grants. What do you think about that, Pat? Um, you know, I think the arts, they, they are, they can be provocative. Um, and I think, you know, I think that's fine. I think, you know, are things tasteful, you know, that's in the eye of the beholder, but no, I, I think, um, if something's provocative, actually a couple of things have come across. And I think, uh, I think those things are needed. You know, a lot of those things, um, they're provocative. They're asking questions that are really important now. Um, you know, to be provocative for provocative sake, I'm not sure about that. I think, uh, you know, whatever you want to provoke, you want to have a purpose. That's what I would say. I'd like to respond to that. Innovative would be another word <laughs> as a, 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 that one could use, as long as it's not harmful or disparaging mm -hmm. of, yes. any, of anyone in any, in any area. Um, I don't really see how something in the arts can be provocative. It can be innovative, exciting, stimulating, encouraging, uh, et cetera. Um, so if provocative means nudity, then we have to make sure we have an adult audience who wants to participate in such an event. I mean, um, I, it brings to mind a couple of exhibits I saw on the East Coast, which were closed because people found them too controversial. Robert Maplethorpe's work, for example. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, next question. If by the next deadline, we are still under COVID requirements, will you be accepting support for general operating funds or will it need to be project specific? And I think I can answer this one. Um, back in April, we did convert many of our grants, our community arts grants to economic impact grants. And we will continue accepting those as long as we have the funds available. The arts and cultural impact grants, which are now, we just opened last week, are county funded and those are specific for art programs or events or um, um, any kind of cultural events. So at this time, um, we have not received approval from the county to convert those to general operating, but we'll, we'll be chatting with them, I'm sure, after the first of the year. I'd like to add something to that. A lot of the local foundations, some of the local foundations have said that operating support is what you can apply for besides the COVID and the fire relief, right. which also they have, and some uh, other foundations regional are also giving operating support because they know it's very difficult to do projects and because they want to keep the organizations alive. So again, you can go with your ideas and your strong history and your demonstration of project management and good fiscal management and apply to other funding sources. And you can always contact us and we can discuss it with you too. We're happy to help. And next question is, what if our organization still needs help? Are there people we can hire to help us fill out the grant applications? Well, we, uh, you, you, uh, let me give, uh, 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 correct some common misperceptions. The ethics of a good grant writer is never ever to write him or herself into a grant application. Nor can a fund an uh, organization fund 
uh, reimbursing themselves for a grant writer. It has to be in the grant budget in your, or excuse me, it has to be in your organization's budget as part of your operating support, or you go to someone who will help to pay for your grant writer. But no, a grant writer is not included in an organization's budget. It can be, um, and not for the Arts Council, but for other organizations, you can put in independent consultants. Uh, they can be an evaluator, they can be, um, uh, even a project manager can be an independent consultant. But uh, grant writers have to come from other sources of funding, not from what the organization you're applying to. And you can never apply for retroactive funding. Yeah, I think she's asking, are there people who, who can help fill out the grant applications? And yes, obviously there are oh, there professional there. grant writers out there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But uh, you know, I would say too, what Arlene mentioned early on, um, yeah, don't have one person do it. Sit down and, and uh, you know, get your kind of pool your ideas. And again, you're being asked to describe your program, um, your impact, your team, um, and the quality of it. You should be able to uh, put that together, you know, tell the story of those things. Um, I think it's important for you to be able to do that. I mean, if you need help, that's, that's something else and that's great. You know, you can get the help, but try it yourself first, you know, with your team. Good. So this is an interesting question from Jim. Do you ever have, do you ever have an organization say they don't have hundred percent board giving? We don't ask that in our application, but a lot of the applications for grants that we apply for do ask that. Um, have you any experience with that, Arlene? Yes, um, it's very important to demonstrate 100% of board giving and it doesn't say how much a board member has to give. So a dollar is sufficient. So it has to demonstrate that the board of directors support your organization. Mm -hmm. There are many people, especially now, who cannot afford to give large sums of money. And so some token uh, funding. And yes, Jim, thanks, I did say, it's the ethics of a good grant writer is never to uh, get paid based on the grant getting funded and taking a percentage. That's a no-no uh, in the ethics of a grant writing consultant. And I, as a grant writing consultant, I, uh, for 40 years, have never crossed that line. Do you charge by the hour or by the project? You're asking me? Yes. I have three approaches. The way to approach grant writing and grant funding is to understand what the project is and then to research who are the potential funding agencies. So I can conduct a research for you. Generally, I come up with five to 15, depending on the scope of the project and who the potential funders are in the public and private arena. The second skill uh, service that I offer is because I have been an evaluator on so many grants, particularly at multi-million dollar grant applications for federal government agencies like the NSF, NEA, NEH, Department of Ed, NTIA. And in those days, as Pat was describing, we met face to face. So we would be a small group, three or four people evaluating 20 or 30 proposals, each one of us as a lead on five to 10 of them. I got to understand how reviewers think and what they look for. In major federal government grant proposals, I don't read the narrative first. I look at the budget and make sure I look at the fact that they, they, they adhere to all of the requirements and make sure that uh, they've got all their ducks in order before I spend my time going through in detail the narrative, et cetera. So form and presentation mattered in those days. Now it's online and the form is all the same. Uh, so secondly, I will serve, uh, you write the grant application draft and I'll come in and I'll be your reviewer and I will give you ideas. I will edit for concise and precise language and I will talk to you about how to enlarge or, or uh, shorten the scope of this project in order to be successful. I've done that with a lot. I just did it with Pajaro Valley Community Health Trust. And the grant writer was a new grant writer, a young man, very enthusiastic and ambitious. I worked with him. I went through two 
three drafts of it. I really added to it. And lo and behold, they got a two year over $350,000 grant project, which I know they would not have gotten without a good review. And it doesn't have to be me, but a good review as Pat is saying from someone outside the organization. And finally, I will do soup to nuts. I will write your grant application, but there are things that you have to provide contacts, board of directors, your budget, your 501c3, um, et cetera. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> thank you. Um, I wanna thank you both for being here today and uh, providing a lot of valuable information for us. And I wanna thank all of those who are joining us today on Zoom and Facebook. I really hope you learned more about our grant application process and I encourage you to apply soon. We do have two grant application programs going on right now. Um, and if you visit our website at arts for MC, and that's the number four, .org, you're going to find three videos that Arlene created on essential grant writing for success. And I also want to let you know that this workshop today has been recorded and we will be posting it shortly to our website. So again, thank you and have a great weekend. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you. Be well, be safe. Mm-hmm.